All right, y'all. This is a crazy story. I wasn't even really wanting to speak on this because it's so dark and it's so heavy and it's just a lot. It's a lot. But I think this is an important topic to speak about because when you're dabbling in the spiritual realm, you're opening up yourself to potential dangers. Now, I guess let me just play this video and then you'll kind of understand what I'm talking about, okay? Um, once again, this is a heavy topic. Um, this is not something that should ever have happened. And the fact that it happened in the way that it happened is so heartbreaking. A literal family has been lost as a result of this. All right, so let me play this and then we'll have a conversation. This is blowing my mind. Like I literally been sitting here in shock for like 15 minutes, just staring at this article. Have y'all heard about Mystic Lipstick from Twitter? I, I, I'm an avid Twitter user. I've been on Twitter longer than probably any of my other social media. And she was one of the first spiritual people that I recall seeing on that platform. She was just retweeted to my timeline talking about the eclipse and like this tweet. She's talking about um, how is spiritual warfare and she's talking about get your protection on, get your heart in the right place. Um, you need to pick a side. The time to do right in life is now. All this stuff, right? Just talking about the eclipse like a lot of spiritualists are doing right now. So. Young woman, she went by the name of Mystic Lipstick on uh, Twitter. I think she had a couple hundred thousand followers or she still does have a couple hundred thousand followers. Um, she tweeted this on 4-4. She said, this eclipse is the epitome of spiritual warfare. Get your protection on and your heart in the right place. The world is very obviously changing right now. And if you ever needed to pick a side, the time to do so right now, why wow, I totally butchered that. The time to do right in your life is now. Stay strong. You got this. And then at the very bottom, she made another tweet that said, wake up, wake up. The apocalypse is here. Everyone who has ears, listen. And then she says, your time to choose I, it's kind of cut off at the bottom, but I'm assuming she's saying your time to choose what side you're on is now. Let's continue. Or were during that time. Anyway, she just got I, an article. That article, I'm in so much shock. Like, it's hard. I can't even get this out. She unalived her partner. I don't know. This was in the midnight hour. So this was last night, early in the wee hours in the morning. Unalived her partner fled from her home, allegedly fled from her home with her two daughters in the backseat of her car, pushed both her daughters out of the vehicle, causing the eight month old, the baby to, I'm sorry, I'm stumbling all of my words. The eight month old baby died on impact. The eight year old daughter is in the hospital. She then crashes her vehicle and it's a, I don't know if I can say a murder suicide. I am in utter disbelief. I can't even, I, I can't even think straight from hearing this, from reading this. I am so shocked. I don't know. I, I tell you guys all the time. My very first platform was Twitter. So like that's an app that I'm on. So. Here, let me give you another angle. This is from Fox News. This case has been so shocking from beginning to end, and now we're learning about a new disturbing layer to this tragedy. A lot of our foundations as a society are toxic. They're ungrounded and they're unrealistic. LAPD confirms Danielle Johnson, a.k.a. Danielle Ayoka, seen here on The Scotty and Sylvia Show, was an astrology influencer on social media who was concerned about the eclipse. Eclipses, there's more births, there's more deaths. 
Leading up to the eclipse on Monday, Danielle, who went by the handle Mystic X Lipstick, made several alarming posts like these. Wake up. She said, wake up, wake up. Oh, this is what it said. Wake up, wake up. The apocalypse is here. Everyone who has ears, listen. Your time to choose what you believe is now. If you believe a new world is possible for the people, retweet now. She said, if you believe a new world is possible for the people, retweet now. There is power in choice. There is power in choice. Repost. Up. The apocalypse is here. And the eclipse is the epitome of spiritual warfare. She also reposted alerts that signaled, this is the final warning. Something big is coming. Mm. This type of story is, is, is probably one of the most tragic and horrifying stories that we'll ever hear about. Like the rest of us, clinical psychologist Dr. David Swanson, who never treated Danielle, is trying to make sense of this horrific tragedy. Just hours before the eclipse was to take place over California, Danielle stabbed her boyfriend to death in Woodland Hills, pushed her kids out of a moving car on the 405 freeway in the Westchester area, which resulted in the death of her eight-month-old baby and the injury of her nine-year-old daughter. Mm. Then Danielle died after crashing her Porsche into a tree in Redondo Beach. Perhaps she thought that this eclipse meant that it was the end of the world. The apocalypse was here, uh, especially because of some of the statements that she made. There were plenty of similar posts and videos on social media predicting all kinds of disasters and the end of the world. And when you're sitting on TikTok or you're on social media, and clearly she was an influencer, so you know she watched a lot of this stuff, uh, it's very easy to get sucked into the fear that these videos start to create. Could this have been postpartum depression? I don't think it would have been totally postpartum depression because we have a lot of women who deal with postpartum depression and it doesn't result in something like this. Mm -hmm. But certainly any type of mood disorder makes it much harder to cope with other things as they start to come up. Looking at this tragedy in hindsight, Dr. Swanson says there were obvious signs. The happy and smiling Danielle had changed and was struggling with something dark. She was warning people. She was uh, saying, pick a side. Uh, the, the way that she typed about it was in all caps. It looked like she was very disturbed. Mm. I just got the chills in my body right now. Um, wow. People are saying that this is spiritual psychosis, which I'll get to in a second. Um, she she was battling with something dark and this is what i said in, in the beginning of the video when you're messing in the spiritual realm illegally you're going to open up some doors that you weren't meant to open and those spirits that are going to attach to you are not going to be good spirits it's going to be the dark and demonic that you're reaching out to that you're seeking that you're communicating with and like i said something like this should have never happened i mean she made a good point um the reporter when she asked you know was this postpartum depression which i think is a valid question because a lot of women do struggle with postpartum de uh, depression and she had an eight month old so she had clearly you know just recently given birth that might have played a factor in it, but like the the guy was saying, I've 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 personally never heard of a case where postpartum pre depression has led a woman to unalive her boyfriend, like the the father of her children, to push her eight month old off the out of the car on the freeway on the four hundred five, and her nine year old. I don't know if y'all if y'all know this. The 405 in Los Angeles, because I live maybe like an hour and a half, give or take with traffic from Los Angeles. The 405 is slammed. You talk about L.A. traffic, it is slammed and it's not the place that you want to be walking around, especially if you're a child. So even the fact that the nine-year-old was able to walk away from this alive 
is a blessing is a miracle. So she pushes the eight month old, her eight month old daughter out of the car. She falls. A car. Collides. Eight month old passes. Nine year old makes it. She keeps driving. She speeds and flies. She's driving a Porsche. She, she speeds into a tree intentionally, which ultimately, you know, was the end for her. I don't know what spiritual psychosis is. Um, I keep hearing this so much. Spirit, spiritual psychosis, spiritual uh, psychosis. Um, I don't know what it is. Let me see if I can see if I can figure this out. So there's an article. Um, huh. What is this? Signsoflife.au. I don't know what this is. So it says oftentimes these spiritual emergencies are mistaken or confused for a mental health crisis or psychosis due to due to the similarity in symptoms behaviors and thought patterns expressed during spiritual emergencies and psychosis exemplify a loss of rational thought such symptoms include disorganized behaviors irrational or confused speech patterns and significant alterations in the way they view themselves and their place in the world. People often shift priorities from everyday concerns to other less ordinary concerns and an altered perception of time. I mean, whatever you want to call it, clearly she was aligning herself with spirits that were not of God. Demonic spirits. And, you know, I don't understand what type of wisdom or comfort or understanding of, of oneself that people get from astrology or from tarot cards or from any of those forms of, of witchcraft, honestly. I don't understand what type of empowerment they get, but it's got to be some sort of empowerment. It's got to be something. Because the spiritual world is very clearly real and we're we're actively in spiritual warfare. So there's some sort of power that they're tapping into. But the problem is it's always going to mislead and misguide you and deceive you. And I think this is why the Bible warns of you know communicating with mediums and dabbling in, in witchcraft and things of that nature. Because it's the spiritual realm is very real. But the thing about it is, all of those things that you're looking for, wisdom, insight, a deeper understanding of yourself, all of those things that you're looking for through astrology, God has those answers for you. He's the one that created you. The problem is, 
the devil is a master manipulator. He's a master con artist. And he can't do anything new. He just recreates and perverts the things of God. You don't need to go to astrology, to the to signs, to the moon. You don't need to go to these things in order to understand about you or to understand about your personality or to understand any aspect of your life. When you have access to God, he knows everything about you. Literally, the exact number of hair on your head He's numbered. He knows. He understands. He gets it. And he gives you power in all of and God gives us power and authority in the spiritual realm over all of the dark and demonic spirits. We have power and authority over them. But people. I don't know, man. I don't know why people get into this stuff. It doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense. I think if people truly knew God's heart, there would be no way that they would want to get into, you know, being a, uh, like devoting their life to astrology or devoting their life to tarot cards or any of that stuff. If you truly knew the heart and the nature of God and what He wanted for you and the promises, the promises that are offered in the Bible. I don't know how you could go to the counterfeit. I don't know how you could take what the devil has, which is which is counterfeit spirituality. I don't know how you could go in that direction if you truly knew the heart of God in his desire. And that's what we need to do a better job of is communicating the love of God, communicating the relational aspect of God, communicating the promises and the will that God has for each and every one of us and communicating the power and authority that God has given us, those who have their faith in Jesus Christ, the power and authority that God has given us in the spiritual realm already. I don't know, man. It's crazy stuff. Um, I mean, I, I'm look, I'm praying for that nine-year-old, Lord. I, I, I pray that you protect, you protect that, that little girl. You protect your child. You protect that baby. I'm praying that she has family that she can grow up with or friends that she can grow up with, Lord. I'm praying that you just have your hand on her life all the days of her life, Lord, that you comfort her in this time of confusion, in this time of pain, in this time of loss. I pray that you fill in the void, that that void that she's feeling, that gap, that 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 missing piece of, of herself, that love that she received from her father, from her mother, from her sister. I'm praying that you can fill in that gap, Lord. Man. It's a tough story. Um, it's a tough story. Let me know what y'all think. Get in my comments. Like this video. I'm out, y'all.